Welcome to the Patricia App training video. In this video, we will be discussing all aspects of the Patricia App. Let's start with the first step, which is accessing the app. To launch the app, tap on the Patricia icon displayed on your home screen. The login screen will appear, and here you need to enter both a username and a password to log in. The login details are exactly the same as your Patricia username and password. Other areas to take note of is the Start Tour button. Tap this to watch an introductory Patricia app video. You can also access domain settings by tapping on the small gear icon shown here. After entering your username and password, tap the login button. Let's take a quick look at the app interface. First we have our header bar which gives us access to several different areas. We access different parts of the app by tapping on the buttons shown here. The dashboard button takes us to the dashboard reports area. The my terms button displays the user's term list. Here the user can see all terms that they need to attend to. The find button allows us to search for cases based on specific criteria. We can then open case details from our result set. We then have time login where all time registration specific actions are performed. The help button displays a context sensitive help screen that overlays any opened area. This provides helpful information about the interface. As an example, let me tap on the My Terms page and then tap on the Help Screen button. Notice the Help Screen is overlaid showing My Terms specific information. You can tap the Help button on any of the areas to see relevant information. Also take note of the side arrows shown here. Tapping these arrows will cycle through the various help screens that are relevant. Lastly, the Log Out button lets us log out of the Patricia app. The subheader bar area gives options that affect how data is displayed. Here we can filter data by using the filter field. We can sort results by tapping on the Sort By button and we have several area specific buttons spread across the screens. The My Term area displays terms registered on you. It is also the first page displayed when logging in. Vital information is available to us, like case related information, internal external dates, the amount of terms and so on. You have the option to change how this information is displayed. We can view our terms in either a list view or a card view layout. At the moment I have the list layout active. To switch to the card view, tap on the card list view button. My layout will then update accordingly. To move between terms that span many pages, do the following. If in card view, swipe across the page right to left to move between the term pages. If in list view, swipe from the bottom to the top of the screen to scroll through the list. Also you can set the date up to which terms will be displayed. You do this by using the until date button shown here. Tap this button to have the date picker window appear. Choose the new until date and tap on set date. Your terms will then be updated to include all terms falling on you up to that period. If you wish to reset the date to its default value, tap on the reset button. Next you can sort terms by tapping on the sort by button. In this window, tap on the criteria field you wish to sort by. In my example this could be case number. Then choose whether the sorting will be ascending or descending by tapping here. Your results will then be sorted accordingly. Another handy feature is the ability to filter your data. Tap on the filter field option and type in the text value you wish to filter on. Confirm your entry via the on-screen keyboard. Your results will then be filtered. If you wish to remove the filter, tap on the small X icon displayed next to your entered text. Lastly, it is very easy to access case details of a specific term. Simply tap on the term item itself which will then open the case details. When you do this, the case overview area will appear. 
The Find Case button allows you to search for cases using specific criteria. To search for cases, do the following. Tap on the search button to open the criteria area. Here we can see a list of all criteria available to use. Let's add in a catchword value to search on. I will tap in the catchword field and enter my value. Now we need to decide whether to include closed cases or not by tapping the switch buttons shown here. We can also include designated countries if we wish, but we will leave this as is for now. Also note, if you wish to clear any entered value, simply tap on the clear button. Once all criteria have been entered, tap the search button to retrieve the results. Once again, tap on a result to open the case details. The case overview area displays case specific details. The interface itself is quite straightforward. We have our header area where key information is displayed about the case. To the left of the screen we have our page selection buttons which allows us to switch between different areas of the case. To move between pages, tap on any page button. Note how the content area updates with the appropriate details. We have many pages available and each details a specific part of our case. We have our basic page, diary information, party information, documents and so on. Let's look at term management. The actions page displays all terms registered to a case and this area allows you to manage terms by adding new terms, deleting terms and regenerating terms. To add a term to a case, you need to use the area shown here. You can add a term by manually typing the term number in this field and then tapping on the register button. If you do not know the term number you wish to add, you can search for it by tapping on the looking glass icon shown here. This will bring up the find term window. Use the criteria options to search for your term. Once found, tap on the term to return it to your case. Whenever you add or regenerate a term, you will be presented with the term registration window. On this window you can make changes to your term details before committing it to your case. So first we have the term number, which cannot be edited. Below this we have the due date of the term. So when is this term due? The date can be changed by tapping on the small calendar icon and then choosing an appropriate date. The term responsible person is next. This value can also be changed by tapping on the drop down to select a new person. If the person you wish to add is not listed here, you can add them using the looking glass icon. This will display a list of all the users in Patricia, which you then can choose from. We have the action and the status text which once again can be edited. Tap on the text and change the values as needed. Lastly, we can set the duration in both days and hours here. Once you are happy with your changes, tap on the register button to commit the term to the case. We have additional term functionality available to us, which can be accessed by swiping left on a term entry. When you do this, new term options will appear. Let's go through these options one by one. First up is the delete button and this obviously deletes the term. The process is, identify the term you wish to delete and then left swipe on that entry. Tap the delete button from the new menu that appears. A confirmation window will pop up asking whether this term should be deleted. Tap yes to delete the term. To add a note to the term, do the following. Tap on the note button. This will bring up the note window. Enter your note text and then click save. The note will then be added to your term. This is clearly visible by a small notepad icon that will appear on the term itself. To view this or any other term note, tap on the note icon. To access the workflow of a term, choose the workflow option from the swipe menu. The workflow window will appear. You can then select a new term from the list to register it to the case. Also to see a history of the workflow terms, click the show history button.
you can regenerate the term by tapping on the regenerate button. This will bring up the term registration window. Change the values as needed and then tap on register to save the term back to the case. Lastly, we can use the next term functionality to move the term to the next term in the workflow. The document page allows us to handle all document related actions. You can attach documents to terms, delete documents, preview documents, and even download a document to your tablet. On this page, we can see a list of all our documents saved to our case. We are presented with the name of the document, the category, when it was logged, and by whom. As per normal, we can filter our documents or sort them using the appropriate buttons. Also, like on the actions page, we can access additional options by left swiping on a document. We have two options available on this new menu. The first button allows me to attach a document to a term and the second button will delete the document. Let's demonstrate the first option. Tap on the attach to term button. A new window will appear showing all terms registered to our case. Tap on the term you wish to connect the document to. You'll note that a document has been added by the appearance of a paper icon on the actions page term. To delete a document, tap the delete button. You will be prompted to confirm whether this document should be deleted. Press yes to delete the document. Next, we can also access document properties for each entry. This is handy if you want to change properties on a document or if you wish to preview it or perhaps download it. To access document properties, tap once on a document entry. The document properties window will then open. You can now edit any of the fields on display. Let's briefly go over the fields available. First up is our document preview window, which displays a preview of said document. We then have the name and description fields, which can be edited by tapping on the text value. We have our document category, which can also be changed. Below this, the status field can be set to either draft or final. We can choose to make this document public, define whether it should appear on the device tab, or set it to be a family document using the switch buttons shown here. At the bottom of the window, we can link documents to terms using the term connected option. To add a document to a term, tap on the small plus icon. The attach document to term window will appear. Tap on the relevant term to connect your document to the term. Another handy feature is the download button, which downloads the document to your tablet. To use this, tap on the button to have the document downloaded. Keep in mind that you might need to install third-party readers to view certain document formats. Once you have finished making your changes, click on the save button to complete the process. You can also add documents from your tablet by tapping on the add button. Choose the correct source and add it to your case. The notes page allows you to add notes to your case. You can also view existing notes, edit notes and even delete notes if need be. To add a note to your case, tap on the add button. This will bring up the add note window. In this window, you can define the note category, how and where the note should appear and text formatting. Add your text into the note area and tap on save to commit this to your case. To edit a note, tap on the note entry itself. The edit note window will appear. To delete a note, swipe left on the note entry and tap the delete button. The family map gives us a geographical representation of an IP portfolio as filed across the world. This area can only be accessed from an already open case. From the case overview area, tap on the family map button to open the world map. The map is divided into different countries and each country is color coded to match the status of our cases. For us, this means we can easily get an overview of our portfolio across the world. Countries are marked in a specific color and the color displayed depends on the status of the case. To see what each color represents, 
take a look at the handy color legend shown here. You can also navigate across the interface. To zoom in and out, tap on the plus and minus icons. For quick zoom, use the two finger pinch motion on the screen. We have a lot of information presented on this screen. And to complement this, we have a handy filtering option available. Swipe left in this filter block area to access the filter fields. This will bring up the filter selection window. We have several fields available to us. Add the necessary criteria to the fields and click filter to apply the selection. The world map will then update with the filter applied. We are not limited to only the high level though and can drill down into each country to view the case details. To do so, tap on the specific country. The case detail window will appear and displays all relevant case information. The time login page allows users to log time against the case. You can perform actions like starting or stopping clocks, viewing entry details and booking time. The first part displays all time registration entries that are not yet booked to cases. Take note that active time entries will be marked in green. To add a new time entry, tap on the add clock button which will bring up the time entry details. You need to fill in these fields before registering your entry. First add the clock title by tapping on the field itself. Next add in the case number in the case number field. If you do not know the case number, you can search for it using the looking glass icon. Searching for a case number will take you to the case find screen. Enter your search criteria and tap on the relevant result to get back to the time registration window. Next select the work code for this time entry and add in a time comment if needed. Then click on add to start the clock entry. To view time entry details, tap on the entry you wish to view. The time log detail window will then open. To stop a time entry, you can do one of two things. The first is to stop the clock from the main screen. Tap on the small stop icon on the active time entry. The second is to stop the clock from the time details page. Tap on the active time entry you wish to stop and on the details screen tap the big stop button. The time log details screen gives us more information about our time entry. We can see our time entry details, our recorded time units, our time entry history and we can stop or start time entries as needed. Of course we can also edit a time entry by tapping the update button. In this new window update the details as needed and tap update to commit your changes. To delete a time entry first ensure that the time entry clock is not running. If the entry is still active press the stop button. Then tap on the delete button. Confirmation window will appear requesting whether this time entry should be removed. Tap yes to delete the time entry. To book a time entry, tap the book time button. The book time log window will now appear. Enter the necessary information and press the book button. The dashboard area displays custom dashboard reports. These reports can display a variety of information that is of vital importance to users. To access this area, simply tap on the dashboard icon. This will then display all associated reports. The logout button allows the user to log out of the Patricia app. To do so, tap on the logout button. You will be prompted to confirm whether you wish to log out or not. Press yes to be logged out of the app. This concludes the Patricia app training. We hope this training has been valuable and we thank you for your kind attention.